All right, so it's been going on for some weeks now, so let's get into it. The Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. It really it started with 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 Drake and and J Cole, and then Kendrick, and then Cole responded to Kendrick, and then he was like, "Nah, I shouldn't have did that. That's my brother. I should have never did that. I'm, I was that was whack of me. That was lame." And then he took all his stuff off the streaming services and all that. So then it was just Drake and Kendrick. So before I even jump into how it started, I want to give a little backstory because like some people, some people feel like the bigger artist is always the better artist and that's not the case. So I'm going I'm to just explain real quick, like, Throughout history, that that's never been the case. I know Jay Z say, "Oh, men lie, women lie, numbers don't," but that's not true. Numbers lie all the time. Just look at the look at these artists right here. There's a difference between pop artists and like lyrical artists. Like if you look at these artists right here, you got the Beastie Boys. It was a point in the in the eighties and the nineties where the Beastie Boys was selling millions of records. They were out selling some of like the best lyrical rappers, but they weren't the best rappers, but they were selling more records than the actual like lyrical rappers. Same with MC Hammer. MC Hammer was selling millions of records in the in the 80s and 90s. But like if we talking lyrically, he wasn't better than like Scarface and, and Jay-Z and Tupac and Biggie and Nas and all them. Same with Vanilla Ice with the Ice Ice Baby. He was selling millions of records in the uh, in the nineties. He wasn't better than those rappers. Then even like uh, rewind to like what like ten years ago when you had Macklemore coming to the scene. Macklemore was selling millions of records. Remember our, was what was the MTV Awards? What was that? Where Macklemore won like the best album of the year or something like that. And a lot of people was mad because they felt like Kendrick. I think it was like two thousand thirteen or fourteen. Cause they felt like Kendrick Lamar should have won that award, and I think if I if I remember correctly, maybe I'm wrong. I think they had said because because Macklemore had won multiple awards that night, and so many people were angry online. Some of some man Kendrick got robbed. He should have won that album of the year and all that. And I think if I maybe correct me if I'm wrong, I think somebody said Macklemore had got Kendrick Lamar number and called him and told him, "Yeah, man, you a." I ain't have nothing to do with it. Your album was the best, and so, it was so. It was something like that happened when when Macklemore won that award in like 2013, 14. Because that's when he came. With, what was that like? Thrift thrift shop, thrift store, something like that. When he had that like fur coat on, and he was like riding a bike through the streets. But um, so yeah, then you get you get lyrical rappers like the Kendrick Lamar's, J Cole. Big Sean, Wale. Like, those, those are the ones where people look at like, hey, man, hold up, rewind that. What he just say? Like, lyrical rappers are what, the ones where you gotta, you 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 have to rewind. Hey, hey, hold up. Did he say, like, did he mean what, like, it, you, got, you gotta break down what the hell they said when they rap. Now you got people online talking about Kendrick Lamar, talking about Drake, talking about he ain't black and Oh, he can't say nigga, and he he saying nigga, and he he's not black, he's white. Then they talk about oh, well, Kendrick, your wife is half white, and supposedly she not even half white. But I just want to know: Are people using a common sense? Because when Kendrick was talking about Drake and Euphoria, it had nothing to do with his his race. It was it was about the culture part of it. He's basically saying. Like, we, we all remember Drake coming up, man. Drake was on Degrassi. He was having bar mitzvahs, all that type of stuff. A lot of people, when Drake first came in the game, let's not pretend like a lot of people. That's why I, me, and my, me and my friend had a conversation the other day. I was like, man, when did Drake just become like, they, people really putting Drake in like a top five greatest rapper of all time list. Like, when did that happen? Like, I remember when, like, Uptown, what, what was that with him, like, Bun B and all them? Like, that was, like, 2009. I, I, I remember Drake on Forever and all that. Like, 
Nothing about Drake's to me says, oh, man, he's one of the greatest, five greatest rappers of all time. Now, if you want to talk selling and pop, then yeah. But are we just talking just rapping and lyrics and all that? Hell no. But anyway, uh, in the beginning, let's not pretend like a lot of us didn't look at Drake as this corny ass dude. Because that's what Drake was. That's why that interview on The Breakfast Club with DMX, when DMX was like, I don't like anything about Drake. I don't like his face. I don't like his voice. I don't know what, I don't like the way he rapped. Like, people, like, like we remember Drake on Degrassi as Jimmy, as Jimmy Brooks in, in the wheelchair. Like, let's not pretend, like, we ain't forgot about that. So, that's what Kendrick was talking about. He, he, he was talking about, it seemed like Drake tried too hard to show that he down with, like, black people. It didn't have nothing to do with, oh, man, Drake ain't black. So he say, nigga, nigga this, nigga that. It, it had nothing to do with that. It was the culture aspect of it. That's what Kendrick was, Kendrick was talking about. So let's get into how this, it seems like this really started. Drake came out with a song called First Person Shooter, and he had J. Cole on the song. In his first verse, Drake said, who's the GOAT between, he said, he like, who's the GOAT, who's the GOAT? And then he said, it's, it's just you and Cole. So basically he said, okay, the only choice between the GOAT is just Drake and J. Cole. And like a couple of seconds later, J. Cole started his verse, but J. Cole mentions Kendrick Lamar saying, love when they argue who's the hardest MC. Is it K-Dot? Is it Arbery or me? We the big three like we started a league, but right now I'm feeling like Muhammad Ali. So J. Cole was actually giving Kendrick Lamar his props. But it was Drake who was like, who's, who's the GOAT? It's just Cole and me. So months later, Future with Metro Boomin came out with a song called Like That. And they had Kendrick Lamar featured on there. And Kendrick took the time to address basically what was going on in First Person Shooter between Jake, Drake, Cole, uh, Drake and J. Cole. So basically that whole verse on, first, uh, on Like That was aimed at them. So I'm not going to go through the whole verse, but I'm going to just point out snippets of it. So Kendrick said, yeah, get out with me. Fuck sneak this at first person shooter. I hope they came with three switches. And then apparently like J. Cole talked about walking with a stick before or some shit like that. So Kendrick Lamar said, if you walk around with that stick with him at Andre 3K, think I won't drop the location. I still got PTSD. Motherfuck the big three. Nigga, it's just big me. Nigga, bum. I'm really like that. Your best work is a light pack. Nigga, Prince outlive Mike Jack. So then we fast forward to Drake. He made some like Taylor May freestyle. We say something like Taylor Swift or something like that. And then he came out with push-ups, dropping, giving 50. Because like other people started dissing him. Like Rick Ross came out. Rick Ross started dissing him. Something about the weekend, he started dissing him. So that's when Drake Drake started. Okay, well y'all want to diss me? It's twenty. Oh y'all want to come? It's twenty versus one. So then that's when he came out with push-ups, dropping, giving fifty. He started talking about like Kendrick Lamar's shoe size. He said, "How the fuck you big stepping with a size seven shoe man's on?" Maroon Five need a better verse, to make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties because apparently Rick, um, Kendrick Lamar did both a song with Maroon Five called "Don't Wanna Know." And he did a song with Taylor Swift called Bad Blood. Top say drop, you better drop and give him 50. Then he's like, Pip Squeak pipe down, you ain't need no big three. Scissor got you white. Travis got you white. Savage got you white. Like your label boy, you in a scope right now. So that's basically what Drake had to say to uh to Kendrick Lamar. Then he was like, Metro, sit your whole ass down and make some drum beats, make some beats or some drums in it. Like that that's what he had to say to Metro Boomin. So then everybody was like, Oh man, what Kendrick go do? What's Kend oh there's people like DJ Academics. Oh day day ten, Kendrick still ain't replied. Day fourteen, Kendrick still ain't replied. So then that's when Kendrick either yesterday it was like either May first or May second or something. 
well, today is May 2nd. Either it was either April 30th or May 1st when Kendrick came with Euphoria. So Kendrick had a lot to say on Euphoria. So I'm I'm gonna just go through some of them. Cause you remember Drake had that AI version of, of Snoop and Tupac on his song talking about Kendrick, hey, you gotta do this for the West Coast and all that. So apparently Drake at an auction got a ring that Tupac used to wear. He bought a ring for $1 million. So Kendrick addressed that in the song. He said, somebody had told me that you got a ring on God. I'm ready to double the wage. I'd rather do that than let a Canadian nigga make Pac turn in his grave. Then he also said, you're not a rap artist, you're a scam artist with hopes of being accepted. Tommy Hill figure stood out, but FUBU never been part of your collection. I make music that electrify him, you make music that pacify him. So basically, Kendrick saying he get them all up, he get them energized, and Drake music calm people down, put them, it, it, it have them stand down. Then he was like, yeah, fuck all that pushing P. Let me see you push your T. You better off spending on him again than thinking about pushing me. He's Terrence Thornton. I'm Terrence Crawford. Yeah, I'm whooping feet. So push your T real name is Terrence Thornton. So that's what he was talking about when he said, yeah, he's Terrence Thornton. I'm allergic to the lame shit. Only you like being famous. Yada can give you no swag neither. I don't give no fuck who you hang with. And then he said, I even hate when you say the word nigga. But that's just me, I guess. Some shit just cringeworthy. How many more fairy tale stories about your life to, until we had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel black enough? I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he act tough. When I see you stand by sexy red, I believe you see two bad bitches. I believe you don't like women. That's some real competition. You might pop ass with them. So basically, he's saying, hey. How, hey, how are you doing? You posting all these pictures and videos and stuff with Sexy Red. Hey, you might just hey, you might just start twerking with him and stuff. Then he said, ain't no 20v1. It's 1v20 if I got to smack the niggas that right with you. Yeah, bring them out too. Tell Beanie better stay right with you. Am I battling Ghost or AI? Nigga feeling like Joel Osment. So, Joel Osment, it sounds like you saw, he, he mixed up Joel Osteen. Haley Joel Osment is the little kid that was in the Sixth Sense. So that's what he meant by say, like, am I battling a ghost or AI? Haley Joel Osment, not Osteen, because some people are like, oh, he said Joel Osteen. I think he, he had a slip of the tongue there, but he was talking about Joel, uh, Haley Joel Osment, the little kid from the Sixth Sense that was like, I see dead people. And then, of course, he ended... <laughs> And then, of course, he ended the song with saying, I don't want to hear you say nigga no more. Stop. So, basically, that's where we are now. We up to date now. So, maybe Drake will come with another song. Maybe, I doubt J. Cole jump back in, but that's where we are now. Let me know in the comment section, who do you think is winning right now? Me, personally, I'm still feeling that like that verse from Kendrick. And I'm feeling Euphoria. That my room five and tailored that the, the verse for the Swifty thing was kind of I, I I like that from Drake, but the the whole shoe size thing I I felt that was like corny that like that was some that's something he would have said on Degrassi I felt like, but let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Like and comment. More videos coming soon. Trey T out. Peace.